Brown is as a, as a guard looking at him from behind. And he lit the Jayhawks up here, Bob, a year ago. Remember, they ended the 69 game home winning streak in Lawrence a year ago. So it was Jacobin Brown who led the way with some great scoring that evening. So here we go again. Texas has had good patience in their first possession, which I think is a good indicator for offense. This is Young Cabango, lost it and regained it. Now he'll try to drive on Taylor, lost it, turn it over. Here comes Taylor with the speed, got numbers, high lob, and Robinson comes a little bit far away from the basket. It was a little bit of a tricky effort that time, and Texas brings it back. Well, that's an error for Taylor on the first possession because he had no chance of getting a score out of Robinson the way they were set up on the floor. He had to take that to the bucket himself. Texas determined not to get off to the slow start that they had in Austin against the Oklahoma Sooners. And aren't the Sooners improving every week? Here's McClellan on the drive, tap back by Chapman, and the horn strike first. Now that's a big bucket for Texas to be able, in Chapman's case, to go against both Withy and Robinson inside. They both had to miss the block out for him to have that tip in. Robinson steps out high, and here is Taylor Withy, the seven footer underneath. Juneman gives it to Withy, who steps out. Tehan and the three seniors. Juneman drops it in low to Withy. Withy's going to go baseline, and it fouls. He traveled. he traveled before the foul, and we've got a better crew here tonight. Tommy Eats, David Hall, and Terry Davis. Good crew. No, you could, yeah, you're right. You could not have a better officiating crew than you've got here tonight. With he stayed with the ball a little bit too long when he had it that time. His, his footwork was such that he was going to have to walk with the ball the way he faked and then tried to turn to the bucket. Jacoby back inside. Chapman flushes it right down on the top of Robinson. He's got two hoops to start it. Robinson out at the perimeter. Puts the Jayhawks on the board. So that's one thing that Robinson can do as a post player that not many can, and certainly not that well, Brandon. Set up outside 15 feet and hit the shot. Jacobin has got the untested Juneman on him. You would think that they would run something before they can substitute here. They get it back to Jacobin, and here he comes. Quick step, quick get open. Hope defense came out the middle, and there's the foul. Tehan picks up his first person. Chapman's going to move really well inside and very strong going up with the ball. What happened right here was Texas had set up above the above the baseline and they had room to drive both directions and that's why they drew the foul. That's very good Texas offense so far. Tehan knocks the ball out of bounds and now stepping out and Elijah Johnson has checked into the game. So he has replaced Juneman now. Jacobin Brown on the drive, tries to get it inside, sloppy pass, turn it over. Two turnovers here in the early going. Robinson gets past Chapman, stays with it. On the miss, knocked out of bounds. Longhorn basketball. A little bit too much turning and squirming there to be on balance when he got the opportunity to go up with the ball. Robinson needed to stop right in the middle of the lane and lay it up a little jumper. Expect Bill Self to be very vocal here early. He doesn't want the horns to get off to a great start. McClellan short on the three, tracks it down. Out hustling Jayhawks, penetrates, gives it up inside, and there they are with one mini. And the horns are getting to the rim with the big men. Keep that in mind right now. We'll see McClellan set that up with what was a, a poor setup on a three, and they just didn't need a three there. Johnson comes off the Withy screen. Pull up Jay, not there. Loose ball, out of bounds. And Jayhawks will have it. Fresh shot clock. Checking out Jayhawks. Travis Reliford, he replaces Connor and Seahan. Another one of the seniors leaves, and Rick Barnes goes to Jonathan Holmes, his freshman from San Antonio. He'll check in, and Chapman, who got off to a good start, will take his first break.
Taylor gives it back to Robinson, and he traveled. No question about it. Good defense by Texas. They quickly stepped into that receiving lane. Well, Holmes really recognized that that screen and, and uh, slide to the bucket move, Brent. He came up and made it impossible uh, for the pass to take the ball to the bucket. It was really a good play by Holmes. One thing to keep in mind about the Horns, they have been very competitive. In many of their losses, they've been very tough setbacks. They've taken them down to the last couple of minutes. They have squandered leads, and they have overcome deficits. And they've got a lot of young talent on this team. Now Jacoby, he's the ringleader, one of the great shooters in the Big 12. Likes it on the left wing. Off the drive, here comes Cabongo, high, short, one minute to clean up, block Withy. So there's Withy's first shot block of the night. Cabongo took too much time with the ball. Withy has it knocked away, and now he'll be on the free throw line. He's the best free throw shooter of their starters. We're going to take a break right here. A very positive start for the Longhorns in Lawrence. Very positive. To come on, they're both good friends. You know that last possession that Texas had was not a good one. They had 15 seconds on the clock. They held the ball on the perimeter for eight seconds, which made them really hurry trying to get a shot, and they didn't get a good shot. You just you can't stand outside and just hold the ball because it's hard to get started again. What a fine free throw shooter. It's better than 80%. He's the best free throw shooter on this Kansas team. They'd love to have him on the floor the last couple of minutes of the NCAA tournament game. The free throws are going to be at a premium. To come and cry, catch and shoot. Off the iron, Rutherford with the defensive rebound, and here come the Jayhawks. Robinson, catch it right baseline, gives it off to Withy. And that is a wonderful read by Robinson. A really good fake. The fake lifted the defensive man up, and he was able to slip the ball right under him to Withy. When Withy was out on top, Brent, the defensive man should be all the way back in the lane where he starts out doubling up on Robinson, because Withy is not going to shoot it from out there. Shoot it at 15 feet, but when he's on the top of the key, you just can't afford to guard him. You've got to double up on Robinson inside. Now the horns are being pushed out to the perimeter by the Jayhawk defense here. They're going to have to get back on the inside. That's where they did their damage. And shot clock violation. And it's because the Jayhawks have tightened the defensive screws. They were really into the ball there. They put a lot of pressure on the basketball, and whoever had the ball wasn't able to make any move going into toward the bucket. You know, we've talked all year long about any time somebody in the perimeter puts the ball on the floor, the next defender has got to react to shut that gap out. Johnson. Wide open three, beautiful look for the young man from Cheyenne High School in Las Vegas. Boy, he was set perfectly for that shot. He stepped into it with his right foot really, really well. Sheldon McClellan sends it over to Jacobin. Jacobin looking to get started, and Elijah Johnson is all over him defensively. They do not want Brown to get off. When Bond goes out, you don't have to go out with Bond. McClellan answers no. And with him with a strong defensive rebound. Quick flare, beautiful pass. Relaford saw the open lane, penetrated, and Robinson's on the free throw line. He was fouled underneath. I believe it was Jacobin. Let's see who they get the foul to. It's going to be Jalen Bond who picks it up. If That's his first. If he makes these two, that'll be nine straight that Kansas has scored. They always a You know, they, they have a they have a really good combination with those two guys inside with the free throw, Brent. He's a decent free throw shooter. And as you mentioned earlier, Withy is an excellent free throw shooter. So when they get fouled, there's a good chance it's going to be a two. Kevin Young. Kevin Young, the yeah. junior from Southern California, checks in and Withy will sit down. 
Well, they got a lot of speed on the perimeter now with the four guys that they have in there. When they bring Relaford in for Withy, that gives him extreme speed on the perimeter. Four guys and one postman. Goes over to Texas now. Texas, remember, Bob, they had a 6-2 lead, and so the Jayhawks have come back here with eight unanswered. Yeah, eight straight they've scored now. They don't have two big guys in there to defend the two big Texas inside people. Put Chapman back on the floor. It's rather surprising Rick took him out early. And there he turns it over right away. The pass was a little bit too high and giving it a try is Julian Lewis. That's four turnovers. The one thing you don't want in your offense is a pass that can't accomplish anything. And there was going to be nothing accomplished even if that pass was caught. And low Robinson should be easy. Couldn't get it to finish. And sticking right with him was Bond that time. Now they steal it back. It's Relaford. Relaford spins lane. Arms out. Tap Robinson. No, away from him. Here come the horns. Off the dribble, Jacobin Brown, and he's turned it over. That's five turnovers here in the early going. You know, we talked earlier about the fact that Brown has really got to play within himself. He can't try to accomplish something when there's nothing there to accomplish, and that's what a good guard can do. A good guard sees that there isn't anything there and gets the ball somewhere else. It's so hard against good defense to create something on your own with the dribble. And Barnes is working the officials right now. He's been pretty vocal here on the last couple of trips. I think he was working Brown a little bit too. Tyshawn Taylor with that floater. And he has really developed that shot. His first field goal of the night. Well, you are right. He is really good moving with the ball. And, and you know, when he goes up in the air, Brent, he's looking for somebody to drop it off, too. Now, with he's doing a great job on Bond. He's come off of him about 10 feet, and that takes away any high-low pass that Texas has. Jayhawk defense has been, really been impressive after giving up six quick ones. They're pitching a shutout. Now from the corner, no chance there. Battle for the rebound, and it's Tyshawn Taylor, senior from Hoboken, New Jersey, with it. Saves it, and this is Elijah Johnson. The Jayhawks know that they're closing in on a number one seed in the upcoming tournament. And offense goes over. Moving screen, moving screen. You just can't move your feet when you've established a screening position. When we come back, Bob, I want you to break down the shot blocking fundamentals of Jeff Woody. We've seen him block one already here tonight. So I want you to walk the folks through here when we come back. We're going to take a break because nothing impacts a game quite like a shot block. Uh, Holly, he's a young man from Southern California, San Diego. That's right, and part of his shot blocking ability, guys, is because he grew up in a volleyball family. Now, this is a seven footer that is able to elevate and have the hand eye coordination like he does. He finds the ball in the air like a volleyball player does. His sister played, his brother, his whole family grew up playing volleyball, and he really credits his shot blocking instincts to finding the ball in the air. And he could be a big factor coming up, Holly, in the Big 12 tournament. Starting next Wednesday in Kansas City, Bob, you and I will be there with Holly. Really looking forward to that. Would it be something if Kansas and Missouri met for a third time next Saturday? Jacobin Brown's first field goal of the game. How big is that right now to get him going? Huge. And we look back to Withy just for a moment. Texas has driven him twice and had him beaten both times. And one of the things to do with him is to bring him out on the floor, face the bucket, and drive. Tharp is going to get a chance here at guard. For Coach Bill Self. Now this is Withy now. And Holmes was keeping him out away from the basket, doing a good job with his body. Relaford, nine on the shot, go low now to Robinson. Come back, Relaford. Here's the three off iron. Robinson has it taken away by Lewis. Here come the horns. Gibbs is on the floor. Both coaches going deep into their benches here tonight. Lewis with that bad back missed the Oklahoma game on Wednesday. But he's on the floor right now. See, Withy is not going out with the postman at all. He's staying in there where he can be a real Jimmy factor Lewis. in any drive. And that was Lewis with his field goal. And he looked good when he went up in the air. He didn't win. 
Prince didn't touch it when he came back down the floor. So it appears to be loose, looser than it was in practice for sure. Relaford is bumped, and there's a foul going to be called, and that is Jacobin Brown who's on him. That's his first foul of the night. They had to set up perfect for drawing the foul, Brad. The ball was in Relaford's hands about eight feet above the baseline. Little fake, drove baseline. Got his shoulder right into Brown's chest. Brown did not move quick enough. He probably wasn't far enough off of him to begin with. That's why you want everything up high. You want to be able to go both directions from the side of the court. Tacey Taylor comes on the floor and commits a turnover, a five-second violation immediately. They put the big man on him, and uh, Tyshawn and Robinson did not communicate well that time. And he wanted him to come back to him. And the Jayhawks hold a two-point lead now. And they put the big man on him on the out-of-bounds play, and it worked for Coach Barnes, who's always been a good defensive coach. That's where Relaford had to take a step toward the baseline and then break out and get the lob pass from the out-of-bounds situation rather than trying to stay in there and, and uh, sort of bull his way into a position that just didn't work. Mongo catch, put it down on Taylor, tried to get to the rim to get one minute. One minute flushes over time. One minute did a very good job putting himself in position where the pass could be given to him, not somewhere where they couldn't see him. Over the top, Robinson. And it's a great move by Rutherford to stay away from it. It was going in. He didn't want to violate the ball up on the rim. And the Jayhawks up again by two. It's fun to watch these youngsters improve. Cabango seems so much more confident than when we watched him a little bit earlier. As long as he doesn't turn the ball over. Taylor on him. Lewis gives it back to one minute. Got to be ready. Jumper open. Not there. And Robinson gets it away from Chapman. And here comes Taylor in a hurry. Pull up. There it is. That floater again in the lane. Boy, he is really, really good with that shot. So many people can't slow themselves down, Brent, and get control of their movement toward the bucket like he does. He is really good at getting under control. He's the poster boy for staying in school, folks. I can't tell you how much he has matured on and off the basketball court. Holly's going to give us more on that tonight. Jacobin misses it by one minute. Offensive rebound. And it has stripped away with him was underneath. And now back at the other end, here's Taylor Lightning. And he'll be on that free throw line. Okay, we're going to see the move going to the bucket really hard right here. And he is so good going into the basket or into the lane in being under control, that is a very difficult shot to be going full speed and put it up there soft enough that it's going to go in. Johnson and Young return with the end. Relaford will take a seat for the Jayhawks. One of the things Kansas does well among many things, Brent, is they give guys break. They rotate a little bit early in the game to save people for the end of the game. Taylor catch and shoot. Rattles out and Chapman with great rebounding position. Really he good. played that like a strong big man. Yeah, really good block out by Chapman. The ball was in the air and Chapman was setting up the block out. You can't wait till it hits the rim to block somebody out. You've got to get it blocked out. The offensive rebounder blocked out before the ball ever touches the rim. Navarro has to give it up. Now he gets it back from Lewis with 10 on the shot. And again, staying at the perimeter is not going to get it done here. Now they're down to five on the shot. Jayhawks have done a good job on this set. It's his spot, but not this time. That'll rebound. It'll be Jayhawks. Over the top and knocked away beautifully by Cabango, whose sky did knock the ball out of bounds. Well, Young did a great job on the defensive board, tipping it away from the glass where it could be picked up by Kansas to start the break. So we'll take a break. Jayhawks that replace Kansas State. They would play Baylor. That's the only thing that can change. The other games are locked in. Tehan ships it down to Johnson. Here's the three off the iron and into Chapman's hand. The Horns need Chapman on the floor. He looks to be a very effective big man here tonight. Both ends of the floor, Brad. He's done a good job so far. That was that kind of three that you just don't want to see. You've got 35 seconds. You've got to be able to get a better shot than that. 
Over the top now to Jacobin Brown. Brown's only one of four, only two points tonight. Thomas Robinson with five, Taylor with four. They're both outscoring Jacobin right now. And there is Chapman active in there. Does he get the bounce? No. Track down on the far side. Here come the Hawks. Chapman went flying down in the lane. And now Taylor goes down, and Young tried to swing it in. Two players slipped coming down the floor that time. So now Cabango set up outside. They've had a difficult time getting movement with their big guys down low. Cabango wants one minute to screen down low. He's holding the ball out on top. Chapman steps out, puts it on the floor on Relaford. And pulls the trigger. Good what a good looking player he is tonight. But there's no way that Chapman can get by Young if Young has a squared off position. He was way above him, but Chapman was eight feet above the baseline. And we keep saying that you've got to be off the baseline to be able to drive. One pass too many. Young should have gone with the shot. Here comes Cabango now in behind him. Uh, Chapman may have been shaken up a little bit when he slipped. He was a little bit slow coming down. Texas doesn't want to wait too long. I think holding the ball is, is not a bad ploy. Make Kansas anxious. They're a good offensive team. Make them anxious. Cabango out of control. Lost it when he got in deep. And Taylor comes back on him. And Taylor to the rim. And there's a foul going to be called. It's offense, I believe, here. Hold on. Yes, indeed. That's what it is. It's on Taylor. That's where you know you've mentioned it two or three times about how good Taylor is with that little pull up shot and that's what he had to see there because if he pulls up at about eight feet he avoids the foul and, and has a great chance of making the bucket. McClellan back on the floor as is Jonathan Holmes here for the Horns. Jacobin Brown stays and they are going to give Chapman a break. The best players ever, Brett, are guys that whose eyes give a message to their brain. That's what makes a good player. Bingo! And knocking it down is Sheldon McClellan, the freshman from Houston. He lit up Oklahoma on Wednesday night. Tehan comes off the screen. This is the shot. Robinson offensive rebound. Going to come back. Not quite there underneath. Rutherford clears space. Gets it back outside. Johnson with him. With these fouls, he'll be on a free throw line. Right at this point, Kansas has missed seven Not shots really point good. blank on the basket. Minute. They've this got nothing good. really out of when they've had those opportunities. So Chapman is receiving some attention down around that left ankle. They're having it retaped over there by one of the trainers. We'll show you how he went down, but you could tell he came down slowly the next trip down the floor, and with he misses for the first time at the free throw line. Now watch underneath. Just lost his balance and went down. Now when he comes back down with this shot, take a look at the facial expression. And Coach Barnes knew he had to get him off the floor. With he knocks down his second free throw, and we're deadlocked at 17. Five minutes to go here in the first half. We could have a dandy Bruin and Lawrence. That fresh from McClellan now handling the ball. Tien knows he's got his hands full. Good crossover. Come to the rim and blocked by Wizzy. There's the shot blocker. Two blocks tonight already. Rutherford at the other end off balance draws the foul. He'll be at the free throw line. We're going to see Withy right here. Watch him move into position so he doesn't charge. He doesn't really swat at the ball. He has his arm up. And the shot kind of comes into his hand. That's the way Bill Russell introduced blocking to basketball. You know, the one thing you should know better than anybody, and I talked about it. Russell kept the ball in play with the blocks. Didn't knock it up into the second row, didn't showboat with it. Somebody could handle it and go from there. That's so important. And that's a huge point that you make because when Russell blocked, it was a turnover. It became the Celtics ball when he blocked because, as you said, he didn't do anything with it fancy. He just stopped the shot, got it, threw it out, and they ran. Just like that, Bobby was magnificent. 
And I had a pretty good friend named Havlicek that scored a lot on the end of those breaks. <laughs> yes, indeed. Hondo played with you at Ohio State. There's Jacobin Brown. I'm going to tell you right now, Elijah Johnson doing a fine job on him. Well, Texas has had good patience, Brent. This is the best patience I think I've seen Texas have. Well, these freshmen now are starting to grow up, starting to mature. They've been out there. He's listening to coaching staff. Six on the shot. Cavango kicks corner. Didn't get the bounce into Rutherford's hands, and here they come. Holmes had an open look that time. Four minutes left here in the first half. Johnson penetrates in low to Robinson. He's trying to get it started, and Holmes, he blocked that shot. Holmes did a great job with his hands in the air. He, he kept away from the foul, and Robinson made a mistake turning right into him. That right hand turning, trying to go right handed with it. He needed to turn to his left shoulder where he could use his right hand to keep the ball away from the block. Bond is in low along with Holmes, so it's a very young team on the floor, except for Jacobin right now for the Horns. Fade, no, and Taylor yanks it down with his right hand now. Penetrates, comes over to the right. This foul is going to be called. Getting back to postman just a moment. When guy gets the ball in the low post, he's got to know where the defensive postman is so he can fake right, go left, or vice versa. And they Robinson usually is very good at that. Players Lounge. And when I asked Tyshawn, will you be motivated against Texas? You've already won the championship. He said, are you kidding me? He's 67 and one in this building. His only loss is to Texas. And he said, we ain't letting that happen tonight. Well, he's coming to the free throw line, Holly, for the first time here tonight. He has four points. Robinson and Withy with five points apiece. And now Tyshawn with five. As far as Jacobin Brown, the hot hand, he has that one field goal for the Horns right now. So he has only two points. But we told you the story of Jacobin a year ago was in the second half. Texas has done a really good job getting down the floor when Kansas has gone from defense to offense, and they're not giving them a lot right around the bucket. They've had a lot of opportunities, but they've been shots under a great deal of pressure that just haven't gone down for Kansas. Johnson is chasing Jacobin Brown, and he's done a superb job. Chapman steps out high now. That is one of the. On the drive, got a kick and he traveled. There was no question about it. Cabango was a little bit out of control. That's a couple of times now he's turned it over in the lane, Bob. Well, Withy made a really good move defensively there. Just as he crossed the circle line, Withy took two steps toward him and that got him a little bit. And that's what wound up in the walk. Now that's a ninth turnover, but the Jayhawks have been unable to convert off those turnovers. They only had five off the first eight. Let's see what they do with this set. Taylor's floater. Yes. Oh, that's his best shot. Well, you know, that the three times before that now that he's gone to the bucket, he's tried to get all the way to the bucket. And we made the comment, you know, pull up, pull up at six or eight feet because you're so absolutely good with it. And that ended uh, strictly that dramatic one in Cameron. Noon tomorrow, they'll play Clemson ACC contest. And how about Carolina ripping, ripping them 88 to 70. Jumped on the Blue Devils in the first five minutes and never looked back. Now Jacobin pulls the trigger, not this time, a little bit hard at the back of the iron into Withy's hands. Well, let's see, they're going to set it up a little bit here. They want to spread the court and go side to side. Let's see if they end up getting it in. Cullen, Bond both stay on the floor with Cabango. Three freshmen out there for Coach Barnes. Robinson. They kept him under wraps today, but he backs in, not this time again, but back to Taylor. Time shot to get it across now, and Rutherford's got an open look. He nails it. Really careless pass there. That was a huge miss on the pass, given Kansas another life in that possession. Big trip here for the Hornets. They want something positive when they go into that locker room. Withy does a really good job helping guys coming off the ball screen and they're a little bit intimidated by him because he stays off of them a little bit and can step up to get a piece of any shot. 
McClellan has a strip Rutherford and Cabango knocks it out of bounds. This could be Jayhawk. This is a great finish here by a veteran team in the last couple of minutes. They are closing with an exclamation mark right now on the horns. Got a seven point lead all of a sudden. With the other high screen, Johnson comes around, Taylor, and it's off. Cabango out of bounds. Ooh, they were really lucky there. That was a real lucky break for Kansas because the pass could not be gotten through to Taylor. Robinson out high. Bond on him. Off the dribble. Spin. Open on the turnaround. No, couldn't nail it. And Chapman will bring it down. So the Horn survived that trip. Chapman again picks it up, and here's Jacoba. Whiffy is always there to help. Now he moved a little bit that time. On the drive, the foul is going to go against Kansas. So Taylor picks up his second here on that drive, and Tehan will replace him. Coach Self doesn't want him getting a third foul before the intermission. We've got 47 seconds, so Taylor will sit down. If we were to see that again, Brett, we would see Taylor's hands going in on Brown. And you know, we've talked a lot about you play defense with your feet, not your hands. And every time you go in on the offensive dribbler with your hands, you risk getting a foul. And that's exactly what happened there. It's a two point gift to Texas here at the end of the game. And this is the first time the Longhorns have made it to the free throw line. And Jacobin cashes in both times. And it's back to five. Now this is where Kansas just does not want Texas to get another possession. They're going to get one though. Even after the Robinson flush. 29 seconds to go. Barnes and Jacobin talk it over. One shot. They'll bring that shot clock down. 26-19. It's a seven point advantage for the Jayhawks. Texas. Come on, far away from the basket now. Texas, even if it winds up holding the ball till the clock expires, cannot give Kansas a possession. Jacobin going to drive, faded from the right baseline, rattles out, tap is good. And a timeout quickly with 1.3 left. Huge, huge basket right there. What an effort that was to get the tip in. The big man. Possession that Kansas dearly wanted to make sure that Texas didn't get a bucket. That's going to bring it to an end as Cabango from midcourt off the top. A five point lead for the Jayhawks here. I think Texas should be very happy with going off the floor with a five point deficit. I think they've done well to stay in the game. Let's go to Holly Rowe with Coach So. End of the floor where they deny Kansas that last bucket, which amounts to a four point play. Chapman was outstanding. And now, Holly, what's the situation with his injured ankle? Well, I spoke with their athletic trainer, Eric Fry, at halftime. He said he has sprained that ankle. They treated it the half, re wrapped it. But I can tell you, when Clint was walking from the locker room back out onto the floor, guys, he was barely walking well. He was very gimpy, but he's out there trying to give it his best. Just as you were talking, he lost a man coming down the lane. There is no question that he is slowed by that ankle now. In that first possession, and you can eat, you can just see him out on the floor laboring a little bit. So let's see if he can play through that right now. We saw him retaping it, but he's wincing even as he comes out to set that screen. Grant at the other end. And Jacobin Brown, remember his second half a year ago, nails his first three point shot of the evening. At the other end, that miss, that miss by Robinson. On the last possession was the seventh time he's missed the ball inside. We got we've got two two horns down. We've got a real injury and Chapman is one of them down again. And they're helping him back up to his feet now. I think Chapman's OK. One minute continues to be down. Now here comes Taylor with another floater and Chapman undercut one minute. There's no question it was an accident. Watch this, and one minute went down hard. Well, there was a charge involved in there, I think, in the very beginning.
Chapman goes down and you're thinking that Tyshawn charged into him. Well I think there could have been a charge called there definitely. And one minute you can see reaching I believe for a wrist take a close look at this and see if he doesn't reach up in pain fell awkwardly and he reaches over and he's receiving major medical attention down here. He fell awkwardly back on that arm as Chapman who was hit by Tyshawn undercut him when he went back. I think while we're talking about injuries let's go back to a basketball note and, and that's the idea of Robinson and we mentioned that a moment ago has had seven misses point blank on the basket and that has been a huge difference in this ball game. Yeah Robinson about three of eleven tonight Bob but here's one more look now watch Chapman go back one minute he's in the air undercuts the right leg awkwardly watch the left arm. Left arm goes in behind the body. And he's going to go to the Texas locker room immediately. I also think, you know, he fell very hard on his hip. I think he got a real jolt there. And Chapman, if you weren't with us in the first half, he was coming down and watch as number, he loses his footing. And simply slips and re injures that ankle, and it was re taped over there on the sideline. So, major moments for the big men. The good news was on that last trip for the Horns, Jacobin Brown lit him up with a three ball. Jacobin's going to come again, and he draws a foul. He'll shoot three free throws. Todd Elijah, a little tight. On the right hand side, and he went right back up and he was fouled, and here's three free throws. Boy, what a what a poor play by Johnson that was. He actually went up and grabbed his shooting arm or his right arm. That's why we're looking at Brown, who's gonna get three cracks at the line. When you put pressure on a shooter from outside, You've got to go up. You've got to get your hands straight up, and you cannot bring it forward. One of the worst things in basketball is to give a guy three shots after a foul on a three-point attempt. And he shoots a great percentage this time, two or three, four or five for the night now, and he pulls the horns to within two points. Texas is off to a really good start, Brent, like they were in the first half. They're going to miss one minute down low and Robinson cut off inside easy shot easy score Chapman is laboring with the injured ankle one minute is out Texas in trouble with the big men Holmes and Bond are going to have to step up big. That's the first time we've seen Robinson use that second step move to get a bucket. That's the first time. I don't know that they can leave Chapman on the floor. And Brown's fouled again. Coming to the free throw line. Taylor got him, and is that number three? Let me check with George Hill. That's number three. That, that was all the three. What's the situation? With one minute as uh, we watch Brown on the free throw line here. Well, guys, their trainer, their athletic trainer, immediately came out to see him, and I overheard him asking the Kansas athletic trainer for help. I did see the Kansas team doctor then go back with them into the locker room. Their fear is that he has broken that arm, and I did see his his guardian, R.C. Buford, who's the GM of the Spurs, already sprint back into the tunnel to see if his guardian has. Uh, there is no okay. question. It was very awkwardly bent as he went down. We saw it. In that replay Relaford on the attack left hand and Robinson trying to get a handle and could not and it goes over to the horn so here we are in a 30 28 game and Texas a little bit beat up right now Chapman's over on the sideline he's in obvious pain I'm not sure how much longer he can go so it's going to be up to the freshman down low right now one many clearly is done for the night Holmes is out there bond is out there so the kitty core will try to hold the fort here for the horns. McClellan another freshman pulls it up on the right baseline Robinson rebounds. 
And Taylor quickly comes down. There's that floater again up over Jacobin. Can't stop it. It's been a beautiful weapon all night. Kansas is very good in the break, and, and part of it is because Taylor knows when to go to the bucket and when to pull up. And we talked earlier in the first half about how good he was with that move. Let's see if Jacobin can shake Elijah. Been fouled a couple of times and worked his way to the free throw line to keep him in it down four. Cabongo fires a pull up off the iron three into Johnson's hands, and the Jayhawks are coming down. Johnson ships back T hand open look three yes for the senior and against Missouri remember T hand was four for four shooting three and on his final home game he rips the net with that one time out played against him at Northwestern once he was a pretty good center had a pretty good hook shot it might have been Joe Ruckley. You are right off, my and it friend. Was in, and it was in Hershey, Pennsylvania. In your favorite town. You the chocolate king, my friend. And it was indeed Joe Ruckley who dropped it off. I saw Joe play a very good game in college uh, against Kansas one night. Stepping out now is Holmes off iron. Bond battling for the rebound. These youngsters for Texas are going to have to fight hard here now. Taylor pulls it up. This is that, but Robinson is fouled, and he's going to be on the free throw line. He was fouled by Jalen Bond. Bond made a good foul there because he put uh, put Robinson on the line where he has to make both free throws. He was going to lay it in for two, so making get him from the free throw line. Maybe they'll save a point here. Uh, Wilchino did make his varsity debut against Northwestern, and uh, coming alive at the second half, he wound up with 52 points and 31 rebounds. And that, of course, at the time was uh, all the Kansas players. Will Chamberlain was as good an athlete as I ever saw play basketball. He may be the best all-around athlete that America ever produced. I think he could do anything that he wanted to do. And you know, a lot of basketball fans today <laughs> would not know that when Wilt was a freshman here at Kansas, when the freshman team played, he shot free throws by taking a jump step and dunking the ball. His feet never touched the other side. And they had to rule against that or that he'd have never missed a free throw. He'd never missed a free throw. Never would have missed a free throw. I think he made about 28 or 32 that night that he scored 100 points. He did make close to 30 points from the foul line. You're exactly right. That was amazing. So it's one of those records that gets overlooked because there's no video of it. Nobody was in Hershey, Pennsylvania from the major media outlets. And so uh, we are left with Bill Campbell's narrative on radio in Philadelphia. And he was one of the great ones. Pull up by Benji. Coven's got it. Aaron just asked us, Jimmy Brown, Wilt Chamberlain. Let's just say it was a tie. <laughs> Floater Taylor, not there. Robinson finally finishes in underneath. Struggles on about two feet tonight, but not on that one. And now the Jayhawks have a nine point advantage. 15 overall for Robinson. Rutherford up, he'll check in for the Jayhawks. Jacobin trying to light it up, and here he comes now, right baseline. He knows he's got to carry the load. Chapman's going to try it again. Out on the floor, getting back down defensively against Withy. Hand off, Robinson, and one. Foul by Holmes. No one, many. Robinson just thoroughly beat Bond right there. Bond was in position to stay between Robinson and the ball, but Robinson just went right over him and laid it in. Pretty hard foul that Dwayne gave him. They're not supposed to do that in an all-star game in the NBA. Wow, playing a little defense, huh? Here comes Jacobin Brown now, and they're coming back down the floor here. Bob, he scored all the Jayhawk points so far here in the second half. He's handling the ball right now. I think him playing without the ball and cutting to get open is going to be a really good thing, and the other people have got to help him. And there's Cabongo, and he should have finished that one. Can't miss that bunny. And now Robinson puts it on the deck. Comes back, pull up, beautiful ribbon shot. Big mistake by the freshman at the other end. Horn should have had an easy hoop. Boy, Cabongo tried to use his left hand, and he didn't need to. He could have taken that up straight with a little right-handed shot. Nobody was close to him. That was just a bad judgment. Robinson has come alive now. He's got 12 of KU's 17 points this half. Now Chapman steps out. He's going to be short. 
You know, that ankle will affect you when you shoot from any spot on the floor. Loose ball, battle. It'll be a held ball. And it'll be Texas basketball, I believe, with the possession ball, arrow. The possession Texas. Take a look at this down and underneath now as he comes in. Now watch as Bob said he went to the left hand off the iron. And Robinson buries the day at the other end and suddenly it's an 11 point advantage. You know you always wanted kids to be able to use both hands but in doing that you instructed them when it's an open attempt around the bucket use your strong hand. If you're right handed use your strong hand. Cullen hands it off. Jacobin. Rutherford's taking a shot at him. Chapman out the screen now. Give it back on the pick and roll. Couldn't come up. Crowd wanted traveling. And there's a foul and no need to foul. Jacobin out there. Rutherford would like to have that move back. They've got to get a little bit more help offensively. Texas does. They just can't let the whole thing rest on Jacobin Brown's shoulders. See, Bond being out there like that really doesn't help the thing, I don't think. He's open now. He's going to pull it up. Another one for Jacobin Brown. Brown. Can't give him daylight like that. He's too good a shooter. Relevant <laughs> drops it in load out of Withy. Chapman just trying to hold his ground. Hook not there. Off Wesley. Cabango puts it down. He'll quickly come to the attack now. Into the lane, and he couldn't get it to fall. Withy. Clears space, gives it up now to Johnson. Chapman's really having trouble going up and down here. Here's Rutherford into Withy, who is banged, and he is fouled. Might have been behind the window, was it? Yeah, it was. And he's going to come out Second right now, and defense. Julian Lewis will check back in. And also, for the first time. No, I should say second time. Sterling Gibbs was in for a minute in the first half. He's back. He's back on the floor now for the moment, so we hurt myself. It's really a good call. It could have been called a two-shot foul, and it wasn't. Offense. It's on Wesley. Wesley just came in the game. He was a little bit anxious to contribute something offensively. His feet moved as he set the screen. That when you've set the screen, you can have no foot movement whatsoever. It's going to be called every time. And he was screening and moving his feet. And that cost him a possession. So now it'll be Gibbs who will bring it up. Bond, Allen. Chapman stays out, and of course Jacobin is running the baseline, trying to get free off the screen. Now off the triple. Here's the pull up again and again. He knocks it down, Jacobin keeping Brown. the horns in the game with 19 Eight. points for Jacobin Brown. I want to stay around you when something important has to be decided because you sure called it with Jacobin <laughs> Brown playing well in the second half of the last game they played here, and he's been just as good so far this game. That was a clairvoyant call. He's got 15 points, Bob, in this in this half. Well, do point. I surprise you with clairvoyance? Oh, you never surprise me. <laughs> You're one of the most erudite men I have ever met. <laughs> 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 now here, here's Jacobin. This is him warming up. You know what he was listening to? He told me that was Little Wayne. And you know what he was listening to? The block is hot from that album. And right now. Jacobin is the man on fire. Little Wayne, you know, he was one of the first bloggers that ESPN in the magazine ever had. I didn't know that. George Hill looked him up. You know, you can find anything on Google. Google's Little Wayne, and there it was. Great sports fan. And uh, Jacobin Brown warming up to the rapper, and he's on fire right now. Little Wayne, it's probably you've got that, don't you, in your car, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> I have to answer me. Tanner bringing it down now to the attack for the I, I have little range with my driver. 
Taylor goes to the left hand and draws the foul. And and it's going to be a bully Julian foul on uh, Julian Lewis. The thing that, uh, that Kansas really wants to do now as much as anything, uh, they've got 12 minutes left, play patiently, draw the foul just like they did there. Robinson and get And I'm sorry, get to the one and one. Yeah, that would be critical if they could get to that three point. Taylor trying to penetrate, and the Horns won't give it to him. So now it'll be Robinson spinning in the lane, coming back left hand. Well, Bond did a great job defensively there with people trying to drive the lane, but uh, <laughs> Robinson got away from him with a great move. He's going to spin, fake the spin. There's that step that he's so good at. Stop and step without walking. And now, Holly, uh, Thomas Robinson, only a junior, but uh, your feeling is after the conversation, this might be his last game in uh, Lawrence? Yes, he told me as much last night. He said there's a good chance this is his last game. And he did admit that he thought it would be an emotional night for him. He's got friends and family here. His stepbrothers come in from out of town. And Markeith and Marcus Morris's mom, Angel, has kind of taken over in that mother role for him after his mother passed away last year. She's back in town wearing a shirt with a zero on it to support Thomas Robinson tonight. Now that is Mama Markeith right there. Boy, do I remember her working with the twins on shooting free throws when she come to these games but what a what a wonderful gesture on her part to help the Robinson family out right now back to Taylor we go and Taylor Chapman couldn't stick with him Taylor coming in saved by Tehan pull up Johnson brings another one you know, I mentioned he's from Cheyenne High School. Bishop Gorman is the real power in Vegas. I asked him, what'd you do against Bishop Gorman? And Johnson said, I beat him as a junior. Not what they want for the big man shooting threes, but he's really slowed by the injured ankle. And the possession arrow will send it over. And timeout was called, I believe. Yeah, Texas got it. A 30, 30 second timeout. Well, I tell you, you've got to give Chapman credit for a gutty effort here tonight. Juan Mini, if you just joined us, Alexi Juan Mini knocked out and uh, fearful that it uh, might wind up being a broken arm. First, we're going to show you what happened. This is Chapman's ankle injury. He slipped and went down. And then later, he was setting to take a charge right here. And he fell into one mini, and one mini's left arm was locked in behind him when he went down awkwardly, and he was helped to the locker room, and he has not returned since. You know, there hasn't been a lot of real good three-point shooting in this game overall. Uh, Brown has hit a couple, but the last two for Kansas have been the two most important buckets for them in the ball game so far. That's the difference between double figures and single figures lead. You know, Bob, the other thing that is really troubling uh, for Coach Barnes and Texas from an NCAA tournament perspective, the committee does take into consideration injuries late in the year. All right? Now, this is a team that is squarely on the bump. And for them, if they have lost one many, that is a real blow with the veteran big man out. We await final word, and we're hopeful that is not serious, but it did not look good. And here's Jacobin pull up off the front of the iron into Taylor's hands. T hands open look. Did not knock it down. But I'll tell you one thing about Texas and the NCAA. They're going to have a chance in the Big 12 tournament to earn a spot in the NCAA, even if they get beat here tonight. Yeah, everybody felt coming into this game that Texas would be the sixth team in for the Big 12. Great defense by Taylor that time. But now I think it's a question mark as they get ready for Kansas City. Jacoban backs up. This is and Robinson couldn't clean it up, and a foul is going to be called on it underneath. Jalen Bond. Coming to the free throw line. Well, Lenardi, our bracketologist, says that Texas is Northwestern today against Iowa. Iowa had a great look late in the game to win it. 
and couldn't knock it down. And so the Cats swept Iowa after losing a tough one Wednesday to Ohio State. This is the freshman Jalen Bond from Philadelphia for the Horns. And so far, Jacobin Brown still has scored all their points here in the second half. Scratch that. Well, you know, at that time out, we were treated to a great athletic display by the Kansas cheerleaders. Unbelievable the way they went and flipped and kept balance. And you know, those girls are very upset. You gave all that credit to Oklahoma State okay. the other night. Those no, jobs no, remember, we, did say, we said I everywhere. You, I said you said yeah, everywhere wow. around the conference. You pointed that out. Now, Robinson's had three good plays in a row inside, as opposed to what a little bit earlier. Now Holmes is coming to the free throw lines. This is what Texas has got to do. And uh, we got well, Holly Rowe telling us during that break, Bob, that there is an X-ray machine right here in the Allen Fieldhouse, and that the Kansas team doctor had left his seat and had gone down below. So we believe that uh, there's being an X-ray taken of Juan Minnie's arm right now. Well, that's one of the few times that Withy has been out of position. But again, the drive was possible because. It was a drive initiated six feet above the baseline and it got inside of Withy. Usually Withy is able to slide and take that away, but they but they beat him right there. Holmes beat him along the baseline. So it's a 12 point advantage for the Jayhawks here with nine minutes to go. Sex is shorthanded. Senior night. Taylor playing his last game, just gave it up. Tehan, his last game, he's got it right now. We see, and he's cut off by Bond and foul. Well, it was a great pass by Tehan. He came into the middle looking for the shot. They did a good job of defending him, but he did an even better job of getting the ball to somebody that was open, and that happened to be Withy going to the bucket. For many teams, the big man is the fellow you want to put on the free throw line, but not Kansas, not with Jeff Withy. One of the best strokes in the Big 12. Chapman will come back in and try it again, and Bond will come out. I remember the first time we saw Withy, you commented on what it, during the game as he was making free throws. Your comment was, what a great free throw shooter the guy really is. He's got knocked down two more, about invaluable. Five to six from the line tonight. You know, it, when you're directing your offense to the inside, as long as that guy's fouled and can shoot as well as Withy can, that's like a bucket every time down the floor. Now there, Withy moved really, really well to shut off the drive. Cut it off completely. Jacobin keeps the dribble. Wants to find the shot on the drive. Has to give it up. And Tehan stepped out of bounds. Withy covered it all the way that time again. Uh, Jacobin had no chance getting the, the shot over Withy. What a defensive presence, huh? When he's down low. With that wingspan of his. Eight on the shot. Horns have to recognize not much time. McClellan kicks it back. Pull up by Lewis is good. Shot clock running down and Julian Lewis kicks it in. And that's four for him. Now it's 12 again. And Taylor burns the D again. If you're not ready, he'll get to the rim on you. Nobody moved. Nobody in orange moved to cover the drive at all. It was almost like a layup line. Here's Brown, left hand. Yes. Carrying the load. Trying to get him back in it. Made it a 12 point game again. Johnson alone, open look. Yes. Drains another three. Elijah Johnson. Boy, Johnson is a real good guy coming off the bench because he works his tail off on defense, and when he's open, he can knock down the three. He's done a good job fighting Brown. Lewis, no, into Johnson's hands. The Jayhawks in solid control now. They load Robinson. Tyshawn penetrates, turns it over, and here's Jacobin. Horn's got numbers. Give it to Lewis. Lewis is going to attack. 
driving layup. So Jacobin recognized it well, Bob. Oh, that was one of those failures over there with Tyshawn that he just didn't see well. He took himself right into real trouble. That should have, when he caught it, he should have gotten it out of that corner as quick as he could. So with Duke losing tonight, will North Carolina now jump back into the debate about the number one seed? Remember last September, folks? Everybody, but I mean everybody, said the Tar Heels are going to win the national championship. Struggled a little bit, but a huge 88 70 win over Duke tonight. We got a timeout of Kansas. And, folks, that ring is courtesy of the Blackhawks. He started singing the anthem at the United Center in Chicago the year before they won it. They then won the Stanley Cup with him opening all the home games, and they rewarded him with a ring. And guess what? He studied opera, was an opera major at Indiana in Bloomington. And Coach Knights, you had a couple of teachers, opera people, who always sang the anthem for you. We had two great professors, uh, one after the other, that sang the national anthem better than anybody in the country did. Yeah, that rings something. On that finger, wow. Where is it probably one of the best anthem singers in the country? So here we go now. Texas in a push, down by 14. Six and a half minutes to go. Jacobin carrying the load. Misses this three. Robinson's hands, and here comes Taylor. Last night, Rob and Rutherford finishes. Oh, yeah, the fog is rocking. Just listen. Something really good here on the break. Pull up in the shot. Medium range shot. Two medium range shots. Good fake. Another move. Medium range shot. Nobody in the country is better at it than Tyshawn Taylor. You know, Holly, I think Tyshawn Taylor is the poster child for staying in school, getting the education, going to get his degree. Your feeling now about Tyshawn? That's right. In fact, Brent, when I was able to talk to Tyshawn Taylor yesterday, he said the thing that he's most proud of is that he's going to get his degree in May. He said that, you know, he was programmed growing up to think that it was good enough to graduate just from high school. So he thinks it's one of his greatest accomplishments in life to get his degree from Kansas. He said, you know, I've matured a lot. Things haven't always been easy with the fans. They've gotten on him hard. But he said, when people doubted me here and that get on me, it provided me extra motivation. I'm proud of myself that I've matured. I've learned how to tone it down. Now, the quote from Coach Self speaks for itself as you, uh, you take a look on what Tyshawn Taylor has accomplished here. Stayed for four years. Life has not been easy for Tyshawn Taylor. Barely knew who his father was growing up. Mom moved him down to Clearwater, Florida. Fell in with a gal who was here, an AAU coach. Came back, played at St. Anthony's. Worked to get into Kansas. Has had some problems as an underclassman. Mature, grew up from them. And he's had one of the great careers, folks. And as they get ready for the Big 12 and the Big Dance, this is one of the key players on this Kansas team and in the country. There's mom right there. One of his sisters, that's Janelle. She is so proud. First person in that family out of Hoboken, New Jersey, to get a college degree. In fact, one of the few to get a high school degree. And she stressed that when he was growing up. So we're talking about a young man who's come from the mean streets. He's had a tough as a youngster growing up, and he's made the most of his opportunity. And that's what youngsters should do when they come to college. Make the most out of that opportunity. Don't waste that time. Do what Tyshawn did. Get that degree. Play a few years before you go play with the big boys. Tyshawn's going to get a shot, don't you think, Coach? I think he'll be a, a real early draft choice. A lot of that comes from learning and staying and maturing. I still think with Texas that Tech, regardless of this game, Texas is going to play its way in or out of the NCAA tournament in the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City next week. 
And of course, loss here tonight, and they will stay. I believe it is with that six seed. We'll check as Lewis comes to the uh, free throw line. Kansas State, at the line, big winner today at home. I think that got them back to 500 in conference play in Manhattan under Coach Martin. And uh, here are the brackets. And yes, Texas would be number six. They'd open with Iowa State in the quarters. And of course, Kansas would play the second game in the quarters on Thursday against the winner of the Oklahoma Texas A&M game, a rematch of today. OU, an improving team, folks. Keep an eye on the Sooners. Coach Kruger doing his usual outstanding job, and they're getting better. Here comes Taylor. Got numbers. Taylor! He tries to put it in. I wanted that one on senior night. You know, they're not going to be able to lose uh, in, in the tournament until they've won at least two games. I think it's an absolute must that they have to win their first two games in the Big 12 tournament to get into the NCAA tournament. So you think Texas needs two W's oh, I coming up at Kansas Absolutely. City. I think they're obviously they're not going to win uh, all the way through probably but they do have to win twice. They've got to win twice I think to get in the tournament. And they could be without one many. We'll have to keep everybody up to date on that story. So Holmes fouls out. Scored only one point. He's one of the youngsters who would get more playing time if Juan Minnie can't go in Kansas City as Taylor steps to the free throw line now. A dozen points tonight, three assists and three rebounds. He's been red hot coming down the stretch. That is some one loss record while Tyshawn has been here at Lawrence. Knocking him down, finishing it up. Five and a half minutes to go. Jayhawks suddenly with a comfortable advantage. They've just worn Texas, uh, worn Kansas down. Texas has, has uh, just been worn down by Kansas. I mean, they, they just have not been able to play him for 40 hard, solid minutes. That Kansas Jacobin just has Brown. too much for him. You know, Jacobin Brown would be on my Big 12 All-Star team. He's just too good a shooter. He's unbelievable. He was under duress that time. Well, you know, he he's actually a lot like Taylor in that he can take the ball toward the bucket and pull up and shoot the ball. It isn't just long shot, close shot. He's got good mid-range game, too. They feed the post now, and here comes Withy running around. He'll be on a free throw line. He brought Chapman all the way through the lane. Chapman, game performer tonight with that injured ankle. So not only does Juan Many become a huge question mark for them, but Chapman trying to finish up with that sprained ankle. I'm going to remind you that tomorrow, Tim Hardaway Jr. in Michigan will visit Penn State. That's at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. The Wolverines are certainly headed to the NCAA tournament, and the Big Ten comes down to the last day. Michigan State, Ohio State, Michigan, all battling for a piece. Michigan State plays Ohio State. They play in East Lansing. Michigan State win would give them the outright title, and Jacobin Brown fouled on that shot. So you were talking about Brown. One thing he is, Brent, he's a tough kid. He takes the ball into traffic. He looks to fight traffic. Uh, he gets knocked around some, and he, I've never seen him uh, complain about anything. Agreed. You get a, that's 26 points for him tonight, and he's 9 of 10 from the free throw line. He's going to get a chance, too. He's just too good a shooter. You know, one, one thing I think that uh, will be re really uh, necessary uh, for, for Rick when this game is over, when he gets his team in the locker room, he just, hey, we had a great effort. Now we work our way into the NCAA tournament with our play in the conference tournament. It's a 14-point advantage on that Taylor jumper. It'll be interesting here at what point Bill Self will take Taylor off the floor to a big ovation. He's got a 14-point advantage 
We're coming down to the four minute mark. On the drive with him with another block. Put it into Rutherford's hands. This is a veteran team on the floor now for the Jayhawks. Coach Self has done a great job. Somebody in this league, Bob, has said that they thought this was Self's best job with the Jayhawks. Remember, nobody really thought they were going to dominate and win the conference again. With is on the line, Chapman Fowler. You know, he's done a really good job since he's been here, and it would be hard to pinpoint one season as being his best job because this is a talented team, and he's made it a very good team, and he's done that, I think, all through the eight or nine years he's been here. I'll tell you something extra about self when we come back. And he's got eight titles. Something else about him at Oklahoma State. Guess who lived right down the hall from him in the dormitory? A fellow by the name of Garth Brooks. The two of them played softball together. That's right, they were on the same softball team down at Stillwater. Garth, of course, was a javelin thrower, and uh, Bill was telling me that all the time that Garth Brooks was there, he was just an outstanding musician. Some of you think of him as only a country and western singer, but if you ever get a chance to see him in Las Vegas, let me tell you, he is a heck of a musician. He can he can play that guitar and imitate a lot of the guys out of the 70s and, and the and the 60s. So with you at that free throw line. Six of nine tonight. Three blocks. Seven of ten now. Three and a half minutes to go. A 15 point Kansas lead. What a shooter. What well, a fadeaway. <laughs> he stops quick and gets up Ooh. quick, too. He, he just gets a little bit of an opening, and then he is really good with stop and go up. Defensive man has a tough time getting back into it. And there's a foul on Bond. I want to go back on Jacobin Brown because, you know, Holly, we bragged about Taylor's academic progress. Let's talk a little bit about Jacobin Brown. He's quite a story, too. People forget that his first year he was academically ineligible to join the Longhorns. He actually had to sit out. He didn't play basketball for 23 months as he got his core curriculum and grades in order. So it is some honor for him that the last two seasons, in fact, just a few weeks ago for the second straight year, he is named academic first team all Big 12. I mean, think of the work he has had to put in in the classroom. And Jacobin Brown has been a leader on the floor. He leads the Big 12 in scoring this season. But I promise you, he's just as proud of his academics. Absolutely, Holly. Young man from Port Arthur, Texas. 29 points here tonight, and 25 of them, Coach, in the second half with Taylor on the free throw line. Bond is the second long horn to foul out of this game. So they've lost two. One minute's out with an injury. Chapman is hobbled. And now the question becomes when will Bill Self elect to take out? Tyshawn Taylor and will he take Robinson out for a big ovation? Let's we'll see. We've got 314 to go here. Senior night in Kansas. You know, back to Brown for just a minute. His ability to stop quickly is really startling because when he stops, it's the first move in going up to take the shot. A lot of guys stop and look to see. He does it. When he comes to that stop, his right foot is forward and he stops and he's on the way up for the shot. He is really good with that. Bob, we take a closer look at how the Kansas Jayhawks fuel the frenzy. Brought to you by Diet Mountain Dew, and and you have you have talked about it. I believe in that Duke game in Maui. I believe Tyshawn Taylor turned the ball over 11 times against the Blue Devils that night, and now he has come down the stretch, and he has played so well once conference play began. And uh, that's of course down there. That score is 18.4 points, and <laughs> that would heck, he'd break all the Wilts records with 184, would he, folks? Well, they have developed throughout the course of the year. They have developed probably from beginning to end more than any team in the country has, Brent, in my estimation. They've just gotten better and tougher. More people playing, like Withy has been playing a lot in the last 15 games and made big contributions. It's been a real improving team all along the season. So for more information, and Chapman flushes it. And if you want to learn a little bit more about the Jayhawks, go to ESPN.com slash diet too. All right, on the line, they've turned it back over here. 
It was a great look by Brown. That's what we were talking about. He just sees the floor. He knows his opportunities to get a shot off, but he also knows when somebody's open. That was a great pass into Chapman. With a 13 now, McClellan picks it up. 252. Jacobin keeps it on Johnson, drives on him, and Johnson fouled him. Got to be very careful in guarding a driver like Brown that you don't get side saddle on him. In other words, get on one side of him or the other because he's going to lean into you and draw the foul. You've got to get squared up with him even if you give him a little bit of room. Maybe you get a step in front of him and you make him go wide right or wide left rather than a straight shot to the bucket. Now that's a 30 point night for him. He's 11 to 12 at the free throw line. 30, 30 points now for Jacobin Brown. Well, you know, a kid has to be really active to draw that many free throws, which Brown is. He's as active and as good a drawer of free throws as any player playing. I know one city that's watching every move right now. 69 58, two and a half minutes to go. This one coming right down to the end. Johnson off the rim. No. Cleaned up by Jacobin now, and he'll bring it back down. A 31 point game here. Trailing by 11. 220. Cuts inside, loses it. And here comes Taylor. Look for the outlet, and Johnson was covered, so he wisely keeps it. And then Cabongo fouls there. Didn't want to do that. Cabongo is third. Personal foul. This is a really, really good crew of officials here tonight. They've done a you, great job. Well, not just that, but you couldn't put three better officials together than these three guys are. So Taylor, an 18-point senior night, perfect at the free throw line. Puts him back on the even dozen. Texas hasn't given up. They've really played hard. They've played hard right down to the wire. They cut that 18 or 19 point lead down to probably what's going to be 13 or 14 now. Had a little spurt in there that was really good. 13 point advantage at the 211 mark. Brown. Tries to get in on Elijah, a little bit short. Robinson with the rebound. Outlet now to Tyshawn coming down. Got Cabango with a left hand. What a move. Lightning quick number 10. Ah, here we are. That's Chris Carter, the drummer. He's a senior drummer here for the pep band. And folks, he gets into it as much as any drummer here in the conference. Go get it, Chris. Look at this, coach. He can go to the bucket, boy. Ooh. I'm telling you, he's got that great speed, as Coach Knight has pointed out all night. And that was one of his best moves going into that left hand. Well, he can do two things that a lot of guys just can't do. He can pull up within eight feet of the bucket with a really soft touch. And if he's going to the left side, he uses his left hand very well. Coming up as soon as we're finished here, Sports Center. They'll show you how North Carolina got all over Duke in the first five minutes and one going away. 88-70. They'll fill you in on all the bubble activity around the country. Get you right up to speed as we head for the final day of the regular season. And then next week it'll be all the major conference activity. You know, one of, excuse, one of the things I think Texas really wants to do now, boy, they've given a great effort here tonight, and I think that they need to take some time off, just short practices, uh, heal up from the season, be ready at, at, at top energy to go into the Big 12 tournament. On a miss, it's Taylor again. And he turns it back over, and here comes Lewis now. 
Cabango ships it. McClellan, the three, yes, knocks it down for the Longhorns. One of the fine looking freshmen on this team, and it's back to a dozen, folks. 121. Oh, it's an offensive foul on Taylor. That's his fourth, 116. Self thinking about it, but still not sure that it's a done deal, not too sure what to do. 73 61, 114. Another three, no, off the front of the iron. Jayhawk basketball. I shot Taylor is a very tired yeah, player. Yeah, and you want to get him out of there because you sure don't want to get him hurt here at the end. He's up now, and I think he's going to replace him with Juneman, the senior, when he gets a stoppage. We've got less than a minute. He wants to get him a big ovation. Nine on the shot. Taylor to Robinson, short, Longhorn basketball. Here they come. Stolen. Behind the back. Give it up. He, did he travel? Yes, he did. He turns it over. Now listen to the ovation. They're going to bring Johnson off first. And now they'll bring Tyshawn Taylor out. 22 points. First, they're going to bring T hands for the ovation. Here comes Tysha. Nico Roberts, a sophomore guard from Huntington, New York. His number 20 has come in. Danny Mammy with a big hug. And now Robinson is going to come off the floor. So Bill Self probably very aware of that conversation between Holly Rowe and his player that this too might be his last game here. 25 points and 14 rebounds for Thomas Robinson. Meanwhile, it's a 12 point basketball game. 22 points from the corner. Cabango's short back and it's Saved by Jacobin Brown. 13 seconds. Time for one last shot. Jacobin's going to take it. You know he will. Drive. It's blocked. And a foul. They put him on a free throw line. Merv Lindsay, a freshman guard from Moreno Valley, California, who'd come off the bench as they took the seniors out, has put him on a free throw line. A 31 point night for Jacobin Brown. 12 of 13. And for some, these are two of the biggest free throws of the night. the first one down and it's 32 points. He replaces Jordan Juneman. Now Juneman a senior goes off to an ovation and Garrett checks in. Knocks them both down a 33 point night makes it a 10 point game. And that'll do it. On senior night, the Jayhawks win again. And Bob Knight, your feeling is they've got to win now when they go to the Big 12 tournament, Texas. I don't think there's any question. I think they've got to win two. Once again, the final score, 73-63. Coming up next, Sports Center.